foremost and greatest of the gods. Each of the gods has his share of days. I. Mahasvara, as his share, has four days per month, the eighth, the twenty-third, the fourteenth and the twenty-ninth day. 2. The other gods have two days per month, the first day, the sixteenth, and the second day, the seventeenth. 3. The fifteenth and the thirtieth day are dedicated to all the gods together. Mahasvara is the chief of the gods. Since he has the largest number of days, the four days that belong to him are counted as days of fasting. Also counted as fasting days are the two days belonging to all the gods together. This is how there come to be six fasting days per month, the 8th, 14th, 15th, 23rd, 29th and 30th. This is why the demons gain sudden strength during these six days. So the demon father was busy during these six days cutting up meat, drawing blood amd offering them up in the fire. After twelve years, Brahma, king of the gods, came down from heaven and said to his son. What do you want to get? He answered. I would like to have a son. The king of the gods said to him. Among recluses, the rule about worship is to offer incense, sweet fruits and other pure things. Then why do you put meat and blood into the fire? That is a faulty practice. Because you have infringed on the holy ritual and are involved in bad practices, you will father a bad son who eats meat and drinks blood. Hardly had he said this when eight big demons who were in the fire arose, their bodies black as ink, their hair yellow and their eyes red. They glowed brightly. All demons have come from these eight. And so, if during these six days, meat is cut up, blood is drawn and they are put in the fire, they regain strength. In the Buddha Dharma there are no good or bad days. But in order to conform to what is thought to be bad days, it is advisable to keep the fast and to take the eight precepts during these six days. 5. Comparison between the Pankasila of the Yupasaka and the Astangashila of the Yupavasastha. Question. Which is preferable? The five-fold discipline of the Yupasaka or the eight-fold discipline of one day taken by the Yupavasastha? Answer. There are two reasons for considering the two disciplines as equivalent. 1. Only the five-fold discipline is observed for one's entire life, whereas the eight-fold discipline is observed for one day for six days of the month. But if the five-fold morality is great by reason of the duration of its perpetual observance, it is small by reason of the number of rules which are only five. On the other hand, the morality of one day lasts for a very short time but involves more rules, eight. Two. Furthermore. If one is lacking a high ideal. One will be able to observe the five precepts as long as one lives, but one will not be the equal of the person with a great ideal who observes the eight precepts for one day only. Thus, if the general is a feeble man, were he commander of soldiers for his entire life, his lack of skill and bravery would prevent him from earning the title entirely. On the other hand, a brave, courageous, zealous man who stands up in the midst of chaos is able to conquer the world by his deeds of a single day. 6. The Four Levels of the Layperson's Discipline These two kinds of disciplines, Pankasila of the Yupasaka and Atangasila of the Yupavasastha, make up the rules for Yupasaka's living at home. The morality of the householder is of four kinds. Lower, middling, higher, or absolutely highest. 1. The lower person observes morality in order to enjoy the present lifetime. Out of fear for his reputation or his renown, by domestic discipline, to adapt himself to the opinions of another, to avoid subordinate employment, or to escape from difficulties. The lower person observes morality for all of these reasons. 2. The middling person observes morality to enjoy wealth and nobility, happiness and power among men. Or else, in the hope of future happiness he tames himself and attempts mortification to get a considerable result in a short time. In this state of mind, he observes discipline strictly. Just as a voyage to distant regions is worth considerable profit to a merchant, 
so the merit of morality assures the enjoyment of future happiness to a man. 3. The superior man observes morality in order to reach nirvana, to know the universal impermanence of all dharmas, to escape from suffering and to enjoy the unconditioned eternally. Besides, the moral man has no regret. Having no regret, he acquires joy. Having joy, he acquires one pajaintedness of mind. Having one pointedness of mind, he acquires true knowledge. Having true knowledge, he experiences revulsion for the world. Feeling this revulsion, he acquires renunciation. Having renunciation, he acquires deliverance. Having deliverance, he reaches nirvana. Thus morality is the root of all good dharmas. Finally, morality is the gateway of entry into the Eightfold Buddhist Path. By working with it, one necessarily arrives at nirvana. Question. In the list of the eight branches of the path, right speech and right action which constitute morality or sila are placed in the middle in third and fourth place, respectively, whereas right vision and right intention which constitute wisdom or prajna are placed first st and second place, respectively. Then why do you say that morality is the doorway of entry into the Eightfold Buddhist Path? Answer. In the list of the eight branches of the path, the most important is put first, namely, right vision. Moreover, before undertaking the path, it is first necessary to see. But in the order of things, morality comes first. It is like when a house is being built. Although the ridgepole is the most important piece, one begins by taking the ground. 4. The absolutely superior person observes morality because he wants to reach Buddhahood out of his compassion for beings. Because, knowing all dharmas, he is seeking their true nature. He does not fear the unfortunate destinies and does not seek happiness. The absolutely superior person practices morality for all these reasons. In general, this fourfold discipline is called the morality of the Yupasaka. 2. Morality of the monastic or pravrahada. There are four kinds of disciplines among monastics. 1. Discipline of the Sramanara and Sramanarika. 2. Discipline of the Six Amana. 3. Discipline of the Bhiksunai. 4. Discipline of the Bhiksu. 1. Superiority of the monastic vows over the lay vows. Question. If the morality practiced by those who remain at home already allows rebirth in the heavens, of finding the path of the bodhisattvas and of reaching nirvana, why resort to the monastic discipline? Answer. 1. Salvation is found by these two moralities, but with greater or lesser ease. Those who remain at home are overloaded with business during their lifetime. If they want to apply their minds to things of the path, their domestic affairs decline. If they want to busy themselves with their domestic affairs, the Dharma things suffer from it. Observing the Dharma without adding anything and without subtracting anything is difficult. But for the monastic who has renounced the world and made a break with all the causes of restlessness, practicing the path by exclusive exertion is easy. 2. Besides, those who remain at home are troubled with many cares and preoccupations. These are a cause of fetters and an occasion for faults that constitute a problem. The monastic is like a person who has withdrawn into the forest beyond any human habitation. He can fix his mind one-pointedly. When he has neither thought nor speculation, his inner consciousness vanishes and outer objects disappear. Some stanzas say, Withdrawn into the forest, alone, he wipes out his faults. In calm and rest, he attains single-mindedness. His happiness is greater than divine. People seek wealth, nobility, and profit, fame, garments and comfortable beds. But their happiness is not peace. The search for profit is insatiable. He who wears the robes and begs his food does not know restlessness. His mind is always fixed. With the eye of wisdom. He contemplates the true nature of dharmas. Into all kinds of sermons. He penetrates with the view of sameness. 
wisdom and peace of mind. Have no equal in the threefold world. From that we know that the morality observed by the monastic makes the practice of the Dharma easy. 3. Besides, the cultivation of morality by the monastic earns him an infinite discipline and the fulfillment of all the equipment for salvation. This is why the layperson likewise should leave the world in order to acquire perfect morality. 4. Besides, in the Buddha Dharma, the monastic life is extremely difficult to practice.